Traffic in Silicon Valley. It has gotten worse and worse, particularly with the economy booming. Every morning, commuters drive north on 85 and 280 from San Jose and cities to the south to jobs in Cupertino, Sunnyvale, Mountain View, and beyond. For much of their trip, they sit in traffic. Since 2013, we've had an explosion of new office development in the same cities and new housing in San Jose and cities to the south, which will soon bring a lot more traffic on these roads. As Silicon Valley has grown, our highways have filled up beyond their capacity, causing traffic to leak out onto our arterial roads and back up into our neighborhoods. At this rate, our already overcrowded network is headed for gridlock within the next decade. Imagine your commute time doubling or tripling. This is our future unless we imagine and build something different. What if we widen the freeways? A freeway lane can handle 6,000 cars over a three hour commute period. Even if we had the land and taxpayer dollars to build a new lane in each direction, the cars from just one tech campus are more than enough to fill it. Why don't we demand that big companies solve the traffic problem themselves with private buses? Maybe diamond or express lanes will fix things. Big companies have taken many cars off the road, bringing up to half of their employees to work by private bus. But they're reaching the limits of what they can feasibly do moving their own employees. Both public and private buses are now getting stuck in the same traffic as cars, and our diamond lanes are just as congested as the other lanes during peak commute time. There's no one-size-fits-all solution that will solve our growing traffic problem, but one thing is certain. We must provide transit alternatives that better use our limited real estate and get us to where we're going faster than in cars. This will take a dedicated transit lane or track, or a combined lane and track. Some say we've already tried public transit in Silicon Valley and it just won't work. Service is infrequent, ridership is poor, and geographic coverage is poor. In particular, it doesn't bring people to most major job centers, which is critical for effective service. And where it runs, it often runs too slowly to offer a faster alternative to cars. Some say that our metro area, dominated by single-story buildings, is not dense enough for transit. But many other metro areas with similar density have an effective transit system. Silicon Valley leads the world in innovation, but we live in a transit desert. So what are we, residents, businesses, decision makers, the people of Silicon Valley, going to do about it? How do we get out of this desert? How do we avoid gridlock if we want Silicon Valley to continue to prosper? How have other single-story metro areas solved this problem? We'll explore answers to these questions in our next video. We can find a great example of effective transit just up the West Coast. The Portland metro area, served by TriMet, covers parts of three counties. A larger area, with roughly half the population density of Silicon Valley's VTA, and with nearly three times the ridership per person. Its jobs-rich tech center, called the Silicon Forest, lies to the west of Portland, with major companies including Intel and Nike. Every morning, commuters come from all over the Portland metro area to jobs in the Silicon Forest. The east-west freeways are stop and go during rush hour. One third of rush hour traffic on these freeways has been eliminated by people choosing to get out of their cars and ride transit instead. The light rail system, which parallels the freeway, zips riders along at 55 miles per hour west of downtown. Portland opened light rail service in 1986 and made major investments in the last 15 years adding four new lines. Across the system, trains come every five to 15 minutes, all day, every day, serving commuters, students, and seniors. That's nearly twice the frequency of light rail in Silicon Valley. As a result, TriMet has increased ridership by 20% in the last 15 years, while VTA has lost 20% of its ridership. The light rail system makes good use of limited real estate. In the space of one lane, it can carry two and a half lanes worth of cars. 
whether bus or rail. The critical factor is that effective transit needs a dedicated lane or track, unimpeded by other traffic. Good connections to transit stations can expand their reach to several miles, improve bike and pedestrian lanes, and on-demand ride-sharing services make it attractive for many to leave their cars at home. Silicon Valley can take away some important lessons from our neighbor to the north. We do have high enough density for effective transit, but it must be done right. We need dedicated transit lanes with good geographical coverage near jobs and frequent service. These improvements lead to increased ridership with less congestion on the roadways. Is Silicon Valley willing to invest and create the positive spiral Portland and other metro areas have achieved? Or will we fall further behind? Our next video will offer specific solutions. In Silicon Valley, we have built jobs near freeways, so why not build mass transit there as well? Putting frequent, reliable transit near jobs is key to improving ridership. The jobs-rich cities in the North and West Valley, including Cupertino, have a huge influx of workers every morning on 85 and 280 from San Jose and City South. And people live there too. Five of the six densest cities in the county sit along that same Highway 85 corridor. This puts Silicon Valley's population density far above other metropolitan areas that have successfully implemented transit solutions. And we're only getting denser. Mass transit in the South Bay is not a new idea. A hundred years ago, we had electrified passenger rail service from Palo Alto to Cupertino to San Jose, Saratoga, and Los Gatos. Forty years ago, the West Valley Corridor Study of 1976 planned light rail in the 85 corridor long before Highway 85 was built. And Santa Clara County's 1992 plan had light rail moving up the 85 corridor from the Almaden Valley to Cupertino, north to Sunnyvale, and on Stevens Creek Boulevard from downtown San Jose to De Anza College. But it was never built. Money from previous sales tax measures has gone to fund other county priorities, but we can't put it off any longer. In 2015, elected leaders in Silicon Valley cities organized to press for solutions. The VTA 85 Corridor Policy Advisory Board was formed to drive this effort. As a result, substantial funding could come in VTA's November 2016 tax measure. For starters, VTA could build a rapid bus or light rail system in dedicated lanes in the Highway 85 corridor with frequent service and limited stops. Giving transit vehicles their own lanes and placing stations directly in the corridor would help relieve daily traffic jams. Pedestrian bridges would connect to local buses, ride sharing, and parking. This is a possible station at Stevens Creek Boulevard adjacent to De Anza College and the Oaks Shopping Center. Imagine your morning commute starting with an on-demand ride to such a station, a quick ride north, and ending with a local shuttle to your office. Silicon Valley has grown dramatically since 1976, but our public transit system hasn't kept up. In fact, many of us live in a transit desert which now puts our quality of life and economic vitality at risk. After 40 years, isn't it time we, who live and work here, insist on a faster alternative for commuters, as well as mass transit that serves students, seniors, and also the generation to come? <laughs>